Welcome to Meetings in Math. We are here for 6.2 representations of functions and how can functions be represented in different ways. Today you will need your Jaguar Jots on section 6.2, a pen or a pencil. You might find a highlighter helpful. You always need to bring your problem solving skills and this time bring some inspiration with you. Let's go ahead and get started with some definitions. A function rule is an equation that describes the relationship between an input or the independent variable and the output or a dependent variable. So we're going to begin by looking at these function rules written in words, and then we're going to make them into the equation or the function rule. An output is eight more than the input. So one of the things we want to focus on is remembering that the word is, is your equal sign. And when we say output, we represent that with Y. And when we say eight more, um, that is usually the plus eight. And then the input is X. Now, typically when we say eight more, that means that we start with knowing the value and then we add the eight to it. So when we write it, we say y is equal to what we knew we had plus eight. So the output is four times the input again is, is our equal sign. The output is y and then four times the input. So four times is four multiplied. We'll use a dot to show multiplication. And then the input, we use the value X to represent our input, but we typically don't write it um, for dot X. We just write it as Y equals four X. And then the other one that we tend to see a lot is the output is three less than. So this idea of three less than seven less than something like that. Again, start with the is. The output is going to be Y. Three less than means you're going to subtract three, then the input, that's going to be your X. Now we're not going to do negative three X. This is, we had positive X and negative three. You could leave it like this. Y equals negative three plus X. You absolutely know what to do with integer rules. But most of the time we say you had your value X and then you took three from it. Three less than what you started with. So you really should get used to this three less than idea, meaning start with your variable and then subtract your number. So the other thing that we're going to do is evaluate the function. And this is when you get to do some fun things with functions. So what do you have when you're talking about evaluating functions is you have a function machine. That means you are going to do something to your number. Um, usually we just call it substitution also known as substitution. So every time I see an X, I'm going to put it in a two in this case. So Y equals negative two X plus seven, one X is equal to two. So what I'm going to do is my function machine is called Y equals negative two X plus seven. That's the name of my machine. I'm going to put the number two into the machine it's going to drop into the machine. And every time that it sees an X, it's going to substitute two into it. And then it's going to give me an answer. So what's going on in my machine is this is going into Y equals negative two X plus seven. So Y equals negative two, but instead of X, I'm going to put in positive two. And now I'm just going to evaluate. So negative two plus two is four, negative four, negative four plus seven is three. And so my answer is Y equals three. So when I put in two X equals two, it cranks through the machine and gives me Y equals three as an answer. It's just substitution. So when I say evaluate the function, it just means substitute. So I simplified up the machine a little bit. It's still in the machine. The machine this time is called four X minus one. We're going to put X equals five into the machine. Now, every time I see an X, I'm going to put a five. So Y equals four times five minus one. 
4 times 5 is 20, minus 1 is 19. So my answer is now y equals 19. So it's just substituting it in. And this time I'm going to take it out of the machine picture and let's just do the problem. And this is how you're going to do all of your work now. So we have x equals 5 and we're going to substitute it into y equals 10x. This is going to feel a lot like when we did systems of equations and things like that. So y equals 10 times 5. So y is equal to 50 and your answer is just the 50. y equals 50. And that's it. So now let's look at functions represented in a table. Basically what you're going to do in a table is you're going to do this work, but then organize it nicely. So if I'm going to do that, I'm going to substitute it in and find the answer. So I am going to put in negative one for X to get my Y. I'm going to take this space up here to do some of that work now. When x is equal to negative 1, put it into y equals negative x plus 3. So y equals the opposite of negative 1 plus 3. So y equals 1 plus 3, y equals 4. So that is the ordered pair negative 1, 4. I can do 0 in my head because that just makes that part go away. So the answer is 3. So this is the ordered pair 0, 3. When x is equal to 1, Go ahead and pause the video and now do these two and then come on back. So there's some of our answers. Um, you probably saw some four, three, two, one. I could probably start using a pattern now to find more if I wanted to. The table does have some limitations. It is only going to give me some of my answers. For example, I don't know the answer when the input is 1.5. I don't know that. I'd have to go and do the calculation to find it. Let's go ahead and graph it now. So remember that M is equal to negative 1 and B is equal to 3. So 1, 2, 3. And negative 1 would be down 1 over 1. And then I would use my ruler to finish. Now what's so great about this is I have all of my solutions. 1.5, I have 1.5. It's right there. Now I can point to it. I don't know the actual number, but I can point to it. So what we did in this lesson is we did a whole bunch of different ways that we could represent a function. So the first way that we represented a function was with mapping diagrams in the last lesson. And then in this lesson, we went with word words and word sentences. And then we changed those words and those word sentences into equations or algebraically. And then we finally finished with tables and with graphs. And what I would like you guys to do is I would like you to list some advantages and disadvantages of each one of them. Take some time to review these and figure out what you think those advantages and disadvantages would be. I want to thank you so much for joining us today. And remember, be kind to each other because we can all use some extra kindness in our lives. Bye for now.